Hello everybody and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. We are here once again within the Cursed Estate and we do indeed have a few new classes to introduce before we start off this episode and I've actually got a really interesting team planned out. It's possible that things can go wrong with this class setup but I'm actually quite excited to try it out but first of all let's jump into our new classes. First up is Protocol 193 otherwise known as 193 um, and he is a very blight heavy character that I think is going to be very akin to Harathan. Uh, he's very different to Harathan in terms of his skills, but we're really going to see similar types of gameplay, and they're especially going to pair very, very well together. So I'm really excited to get into the backstory here. Cell has done this backstory, and as we know, Cell always has fantastic backstories. And this is kind of more like uh, a log of the creation of Protocol 193 than it is... Than it is of a backstory of where he comes from. It's kind of interesting. So it starts off creature designation protocol 193. Date of cop capture redacted. Risk level high. States of contamination Ex escapes and location unknown. Log 1, the date of capture. 193 was found amidst a pile of cultist corpses in Prague. Apparently part of the ritualistic mass suicide. The floor of the room was covered in unknown runes in a ring-shaped pattern. Runes seem to shift periodically and have been designated 193-1. 193 itself seems to be deactivated and did not attack when transported by personnel. Log 2. Material test. 193 is made of strong metal of an unknown origin, which is highly resistant to corrosion, fire, scratches, blunt force and etc. When left in darkness, soft green light flows from without the armor's joints. So far, nothing seems to have awakened 193, and it remains in a dormant state. Any efforts to remove or otherwise dismantle the armor have proven unsuccessful. More research is required to determine if anything is inside the suit. Log 3, 193-2, testing. After about three months of capture, a strange, odorless, light blue gazy liquid began to ooze out of the suit. This persisted for 24 hours before stopping. The liquid designated 193-2, appeared to have mildly corrosive properties and ate exactly 3 centimeters into the stone of its contamination chamber before becoming inert. Researchers report feeling sick after being within feet of 193-2. Log 4. First breach of containment. Seven months after capture, 193 suddenly became active and broke out of containment, killing several personnel in the process. Survivors reportedly seeing glowing tentacle-like appendages crawling along the armor's surface as it rampaged through its containment site. After being coated in a fast-acting firm agent to restrict its movement, 193 was captured again and placed back into containment. 193 later went dormant once contained. Risk level chain was changed from safe to high. I'm super excited for this. This 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 backstory is so cool. I love this. And there's actually a diary entry that goes along with this that I think will, is best to read out now. Upon 193's arrival at the Hamlet, when the hollow suit of armor walked into the Hamlet, everything seemed to fall silent. Even when seeing horrors and terrible creatures has become a common sight. Something about this is different. It's like an aura of dread oozes out of the armor like sweat. All but the most hardened veterans shy away from its path as it ambles through the streets. Wow, I love that. That's so good. That's so, so good. I'm excited to use this class. We're going to be using it today. And we actually also have another one here, the Viper, Marissa Mel. And this is a backstory by TA. Again, another class I'm really excited for. There's been some amazing classes coming out on the workshop recently, and this is another one of them. Only recently came out, but super excited to get started with it. So this is backstory by TA. You know, they will tell tales of that ship. That one that once roamed the seas from here to the far lands, bearing the flag which every sea captain would see etched into their nightmares, the flag of the Blue Cobras. With a design fitting of its name, used it used to be a band of mercenaries hired by the king of course and sent to do rather particular work. They plunged into the undersea ruins, scoured uh, the endless blue for bits of land containing ancient treasures. The men aboard the ship ever so daring, kept me meddling with forces far above them and their pay grade. It was when the king forced the captain, Marissa Mel, to undergo a ritual in exchange for payment that they began to bear the new flag. Marissa was assured that the ritual was simply a formality of sorts, but instead she passed out. 
In her mind, she saw her hand made of swarms of snakes reaching towards her and fragments of memory, uh, memories and events. Anguis, trapped in a desert, assaulted by a snake, forced to remove her own hand. Verona, her family, restored to the life but transformed into snakes by the same being now reaching for her. It wanted her. Her tenacity and courage was valuable, but Marissa would not let it have her. She swam and struggled out of its grasp and eventually back to consciousness to find her crew staring horrified at her. She began transforming into some kind of humanoid snake, but even still, her crew loyally and respectfully allowed her to remain her command. The greedy king, angry that they did not receive payment, ordered Marissa's men to execute her, and not one of them moved to lay a hand on her. Marissa set off on her own, searching for more artifacts and trying to cure herself of this transformation, and hunting down the king's ships out of revenge. Yet another brilliant backstory. This is really cool that it ties into two other people that have very heavily influenced stories based on snakes. Of course, the snake charmer and uh, Anugis, who's, um, who was attacked by snakes and has a fear of them. So there's going to be some strong ties to those characters. And we're going to see these guys work together most likely in um, in some capacity. Even even with some of the deeply set fears of snakes, I'm sure that, that Marissa will... We'll try to ease that and maybe maybe push forward through that fear. Again, we have some more diary entries to get into before we actually start off this episode properly because there's just there's a lot of them today and I'm really excited for them all. So first of all, we have an entry for Harathan upon seeing the Void Walker for the first time. This is by Cell. My king, he said, getting down on one knee. I did not expect to see you again. Even in death shall I still be your servant if you require. And the Void Walker turned his head. Curious. I'm sorry, my servant, but he won. Uh, he waned. My, uh, my my memories are waned. I do not remember your name nor who you are, but I am well. I I will welcome anyone who has served me before to fight by my side once again. Of course, my lord, I would fight for you a dozen lifetimes over. Lead the way, and I shall follow. So Harathan is actually. His king has come back. The, the Void Walker went into his backstory the other day, and that's his king. He he's he's come back. He's, like, back to life. And I'm really excited to see what happens between those two. Next one here we have is by TEA. And this is a journal, a journey ent journal entry for Will June, our heir. The days have passed me by so quickly. Like, every second I spend here studying is an hour outside. I've made some progress regarding discoveries of the secrets of my father's past. I can hardly stand by, um, stand to be related to him anymore. My mission is to undo everything he has done to this place. He's made it so terrible. I was visited earlier by a woman who wanted to know something from me. But if I'm to be honest, I hardly remember the encounter. That heartbeat in my brain and body, I can hear it always, and my own heart has fallen silent. Wow, this is just, there's, there's just some amazing stuff here. I'm super excited to get into this. Um, this is just already a fantastic episode just based on the diaries. And all of you out there that have been watching, either contributing to the series or just enjoying it, I thank all of you because these diary entries and you guys contributing and commenting makes this series what it is. But let's uh, let's get into the crew and get into the mission. We're going to go on a curve mission, just a level 4 one. We're not going for anything super spicy here. We're mainly trying to level, level up Protocol 193. Um, and essentially, we're going 193. He's got the um, Pericles' head with the extra blight skill chance and blight amount. Along along with the diseased skull, whenever he takes damage, he's going to blight the attacker. Then we've got Harathan with the crushed hemlock for the extra blight skill chance, as, as well as on melee hit blight. It's going to really help out with this here. Um, yeah, th this one here. I think that's going to work out. In fact, in fact, in fact, in fact... Let's switch up those, because I realize that's a ranged skill and this only works on melee. So let's let's do this. There we go. Because now this uh this skill here can be affected by that instead. I think that might work out a little better for us. Let's try that out. Um and then we actually have something interesting going on here. We have Nick Adjester, who hasn't been out in quite some time. Um, coming in with the um, inspiring tune, the Battle Ballad, um, as well. Mainly because the Battle Ballad is going to be our main source of healing using the Last Light. We saw this recently. Uh, friendly skill is going to heal and uh, provide prot as well as preventing nighttime ambush. And then that mixed with the Silver Syringe should mean for some good healing. It's a risky strategy, uh, but it's what I'm going to go for. And then just to top that off, we've got Isaac with a bit of prot. 
and the Junie's Head just to get that extra healing there and the Cure Blight and Bleed. This is why I'm going on a level 4 mission because this is very much a tester squad. I'm not sure exactly how they'll end up... Um, exactly how they'll end up coming across and if they'll actually this will actually work but as we've been kind of doing recently we've got to try new things because sometimes they work out sometimes they're insanely powerful we've the past two different groups that we've brought out with us in fact have been super super influential and really 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 powerful so let's jump on in and see how this goes we're just gonna grab everything we can and yeah let's let's see what we can get done with this squad i'm actually really excited to see exactly how these guys work together if not a little bit scared as we load in here let's just go in for another diary entry this one here from strange wonder and this is by the unknown the drums of war are beating faster stronger the chains of events unfolding that will bring upon my tra uh, many tragedies into this humble town of horrors the poor folks rebelling is but a start a spark a story comes to its climax, approaching its doom with deep, sorrowful acceptance of the inevitable. Soon the shadows unearth the old mansion will need to be addressed before they consume all of us. But for now, the villains and the poor victims await their retribution. My god. My he god, well done on that diary entry, that's brilliant. With pelagic nightmares. But yes, yeah, so this they should be a relatively be powerful build. I'm just worried about our healing amounts. Okay, this is a bad start. Um, this is a real bad start. So I'll go with that. And yeah, there you go. Three healing for everyone on that, which is insane. Nice dodge on the howl there for most people. Maddening Shanty. Luckily, we have a lot of stress relief here, so we should be okay. Um, so let's take a look at his skills and see exactly how this works. So his infectious offering is going to transfer blight to target. Uh, so I think that means if he's blighted, or maybe it transfers blight from everyone to target. It's kind of difficult to know. Uh, we've also got this, which is just going to be a heavy blight. Um, I'm going to go for this and just go for the attack on this guy because we need to get kills. Um, let's do that. We need to get kills, especially on this guy. Because he could explode. Gargling grab. Okay, that's okay. We should be fine here. And let's do that. That gets us a kill. And there's some blight. Seven over three on that guy already. And then this guy, this guy's got to go. The horror he's going to inflict is, is quite high. And then we heal everyone up with this. It's a very small amount of healing, which is why I'm a little worried. But we can do some cool stuff. Um, we can cure blight with purge, which is kind of interesting. Um, we can do a lot of extra damage to blighted enemies. It's going to buff ourselves, but it, it could change us Eldritch. Transfer Blight from target. I'm guessing that means that it'll transfer it to us. So it'll take all the Blight off the enemies and give it to us, which obviously isn't what we want right now. Let's go for this. Yeah, this is insane amounts of Blight. This is really good. So what we can do now is we can actually boil and um, and cure the Blight with armor piercing and, and do a lot of damage. Or we can just keep going for the attacks. I think we go for the attacks with a 30% extra damage on Blighted targets. And we actually Blight them for a little bit more on that too. Rend coming in there. Nice dodge. Great is the weapon that but look at that. On its own. This, is, this is the sort of damage that I was expecting out of this. And we can just keep on using Battle Ballad. Which is going to massively increase our speed, accuracy, crit... As you can see, the crit especially is going to be insane. And this guy blights more and more. So now he's got some blight. So... Okay, so now we've changed over. We've actually changed over to our other form. If you have a look here, some of his skills say that they change us to Eldritch. We changed to Eldritch there. So now our skills do something different. Now this is going to do extra damage versus blight. Transfer Blight to target or other. Um, change mode to Affliction. And debuff both the enemy and party with Blight uh, minus Blight Resist. Interesting. We've got this here, which is a huge amount of Blight. But it's going to change mode to Affliction and give us a big Blight and allies a big Blight as well. We can transfer Blight from all of our allies um, to self and add a guard. Or we can purge, cure blight, and uh, buff target. Okay, let's try that out. Yeah, that one seems like a good way to go. That's a huge buff there. And you are dead. You are so dead. <laughs> this this group, as long as we don't take any massive hits, 
This group seems like it has what it takes. This group seems like it it, it has the cojones to um to, to step on through with, with very little issue. I just, yeah, the, the thing I'm worried about is taking big hits of damage in one go because healing and reeling back from those could take time. Uh, our healing is slow. We want to be getting rid of big hitters like this guy straight away. So we, we always start off with Battle Ballad. The good thing is as well we can crit with this too, as you just saw. We're also going to manage our stress if it does crit too. Um, so let's just go for that to start with. That's going to be a pretty big blight. It does blight us as well. Um, but actually, yeah, let's just do that. That's a good combo. We get a strong blight on both of those and then cure the blight straight off of them. And then that's a good blight on everyone else. 10 over 4 on you. A little bit of stress coming in with a stressful incantation, but that's okay. We can, we can again, cure that off really easily. Nick hasn't been out in a very long time. That's kind of why I wanted to bring him out here and try this. And it's also just a proof of concept because this could work out in a lot of other facets, especially in the... Um, in the crystal area, whatever that's called, the the DLC, the Colors of Madness. I think I think this build could work incredibly well there. Okay, so Let's get you you two will essentially be dead now, right? Not quite. Go for that. Almost got you. More stress coming in here. That's okay. I think we'll we'll spend our next turn curing some of that off of you, off of you. There we go. 15. Oh my god, this is insane. So... I want to see how this works. Their formation is broken. That, that gives it... Okay, so that... If, if something dies, it doesn't give us the blight. It only gives us the blight if they don't. And also, that didn't even... Okay, that actually worked out really well. That didn't even um, give take away the blight from him. It only it only did that. Okay, we can heal you up a little bit more. This is working fantastically. Oh, whoa! That attack animation's so cool. We don't need that. We've got one of those already. That attack animation is amazing. That's super cool. Okay, we don't really need these, but I'll, I'll keep them on us for now and see what we end up getting. We're on complete 100% of room battles here, so actually we probably do want to go back this way and just check this out so we don't end up messing up. I didn't really notice that when we started this quest. As you can see, obviously, we are we are using three level fives um, on a level four mission. One thing that I did do kind of on purpose, but kind of by accident, is I didn't upgrade all of our gear, just so we're not super overpowered coming into this. Like, obviously, we want to be as powerful as we can, but at the same time, I want to give this this build a fair shot of seeing how good it is. We're definitely low on food already. Okay, no battle. So we don't have to go that way. Good. Best to check. Uh, we do, also, of course, have this as well for the massive increase to uh, scouting chance and the slight amount of armor piercing. I pretty much want to take the Slater Hatchling every single time we come here because 25% to scouting is a huge, huge amount. It's going to help out a lot. Gonna help out a whole ton. But let's keep going. Let's keep going. As I said as well, we do have a ton more diary entries to get into this episode, so I'll probably go for a few more when we go camping. Um, I like these episodes where we have a ton. It's, it, it's it always it makes for interesting gameplay and interesting story progression. There's another food eating. We really need to find more food because we are very, very low already. Another tough battle. Again, though, we got the surprise, so that definitely helps. Let's start that off. Um, let's get you two going with the Blight. Let's do that. Means we can hit you next turn. We'll do that. Oh, you almost died in one hit. Close. Pretty big damage there. That's the sort of damage numbers we don't want to be seeing. Nice dodge. Please, can you attack Scourge at 193? Like, that'd be so good. Damn, we needed a crit there, really. A time to perform beyond one's limits. Uh, you're going to die. Let's just go for you then, shall we? Nice crit as well. Even more blight. 14. 
Let's quickly cure this off of us. Nice hit. More blight. And you die, and more blight. 19, it's insane. The stacking of this team is crazy. It scales so well. Venomous jab coming in. We're blighted again, but we can get rid of that pretty easily. I'm hoping for crit heals here, but we're not always going to get them. Uh, let's just cure you up and heal you. The healing amount isn't a lot, but it does help. There we go. Ooh, we actually got ourselves the disease. with a 3% chance for us to get the disease, and we actually got it there. I love that. That is so cool. Unfortunately, Blight does last after the battle. Oh, no, it doesn't. It cures us off. So let's see what decomposition does here. Uh, oh. What? We got decomposition, but it's not there. Oh, it's a disease. Okay. Um, that's great. That's great. Just lots of le lo lots less food. I'll, I'll definitely take that. Let's just hope we can find some food pretty soon. Very, very necessary right now. But this this year, it's it's proving to be a good team. Wow, that's the third one of these guys. In the later missions, these guys become common. But we're getting a lot of surprises here, though, so that's great. A crit there's great. Starts off that blight train. Nice crit heal on Harathan there. He needed that. I don't care about doing this early on. I'd rather get the blight started. A decisive bubbling. Oh my god. 10 over 4. It's crazy. Crazy. Nice dodge again, Nick. Well done. You're dead already. You're dead already. Wow. This is absurd. This is absurd. I love this. This is so good. Go for that. A little bit more blight on there. A little bit more blight on there. And you're dead. Wow. This team. Ooh, we'll take care of the sea dog, definitely. Uh, and I think this is where we'll get our remaining food that we needed. Normally, the fish carcass gives food. Glittering it gave two. Gold, it gave two. Paid Damn. Blood. We'll, we'll camp at this space here, I think. If it's a... No, we'll go to the next one, because neither of these are battles. Nice. Pack with a map in it. Maybe a secret room, possibly. Unfortunately not. Hunger again? That's our fourth hunger check. On a medium mission. Is this is bad. Is We're not going to be able to eat we uh, while we sleep. But that's okay. We don't to need it. to. We don't need to be able to eat while we sleep at the minute, to be honest. While we can. Ooh, there you go. Another one of these. A fortune. No food that time, Waiting though. To be spent. Right. Let's camp up. We might actually be able to go on two missions here. This is a this is a very short one. Uh, we'll see. It depends how long we spend uh, going through our diaries. So first of all, we we don't really need to eat anything, so let's just eat two. Uh, we're, we're all good on stress and everything. But let's get into a few more diaries here, because we do have a few to get through. Um, first of all, we have one for our chaplain, um, Rayla, by T.E.A. A wonderful day, but a terrible one by a much further degree. I found my dear brother, Renault. His arm was covered in soot, as was his little home he had taken residence in. Apparently, there was a rather violent uprising recently that needed to be quelled, and a few stray um, commoners assaulted him. He seemed happy, but tired. They haven't needed his help much recently in driving back the evils of the land, but he was glad to have started this great war and content with where he was. I know he isn't. I plan to drag him out on a quest as soon as I'm able. I've already reclaimed myself, uh, acclaimed myself to the way of adventuring in on my own expedition a short while ago. He asked of his family, and it was then that I had to break it to the terrible news to him. Uh, given to me by Petra, one of the few survivors of Armidus. The city to which they had been sent to safety. It had fallen, and there was likely no other survivors. Renault felt silent after that, and I left him, not knowing what else to say. We have been separated for so long. My strength comes from the light, but he had to earn his. I haven't seen what he has. Wow, that's, that's, that's a deep one, that, and we're definitely going to have to get those guys out together. Them guys really, really need to spend some time getting to know each other and reacquainting themselves in battle. 
Next one here is uh, for Karina Duran, our Philomath by Strange Wonder. Went to talk with the air. He can hear it too, the heartbeat, the drums of the endless void, the rhythmic cry of a sleeping menace. Somewhere from below the ground, far below. Too far to see, reach, hear, but we can hear. There was an uprising. The old man screamed at the end that it's a, that the end is approaching, but his eyes are still in place. They failed. Failure. My mind is clearing just a little. I can understand more. I can use it. I feel it. I went along with a few people here. The scent of blood and void. A burning light doesn't burn. Strange. I, I love I love uh, Strange Wonders writing, especially for Philomath. You really get that sense of someone that is clearly in turmoil with their own brain like they're they they having some issues and we got one more here we'll go into um before we head off again and this is again by TEA and this is for Bethel and Man at Arms the little perimeter I've set up around the hamlet as well as the fortifications should keep us all well pr protected from any invading forces someone new offered to help in patrols a woman knight named Rail uh, Railia she didn't say much after I gave her orders she's rather cold and has this stare of a grim determination on her face all the time. It's unsettling. On a more exciting note, I have railed some of the, um, rallied some of the soldiers which were ready to try and take on the she-devil Chasey. We know where she is, and the raid will happen in a few days. We've got ropes and guns and some smoke bombs gracefully provided by Isaac without question. Preparation is complete. Now for the execution, which I'll be taking care, uh, charge of myself. Damn, there's going to be some some conflict very soon. Some some big conflict. I'm kind of excited to see where this goes. But we shall see what we need to do for camping. Let's have a little look-see. Um, remove disease. So actually, I, w I could remove decomposition, but I kind of like it. I'm not going to lie. So there's not really much point in doing that. Um, extra melee damage and accuracy. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, and... Plus 20 pro until camp, minus 10 virtue chance. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, we don't really need anything else. In fact, can we just like do that? Yeah, <laughs> we can just remove that debuff. And we don't really need anything else here, to be honest. I guess we'll just do this and then let's sleep. Let's go. We don't need to prevent nighttime ambush Mac with this light. And we can carry on forward. Born. Pressing onwards. These guys are, um, are destroying the opposition right now. Ooh, okay, look at one of these guys. These guys, we've seen that they're a bit more dangerous than I first let on. Like, these guys can be really, really difficult to take down. So let's just blight the absolute hell out of him. And see what we can get done. Well, th this is this is just a fun team. I really like this. Eight over three. And then blight all of them. That gets the stealth guy as well, so that's worth doing. We're already at 11 over 3. Coral Smash coming in. That blighted you and resisted the movement. 7 over 3. Oh my god. Already. Just from hitting me. It's crazy. In comes the rain of whips. A lot of these guys shouldn't be able to bleed. So this isn't too bad. Right. Buff up again. I can't believe how well this has worked. I think maybe if we went on a level 5 mission, we wouldn't see quite as good results. So far, so good. You're going down, sir. 24 over 5. Slowly, gently. I just love the way this some people we just don't even have to deal with. Taken. Look at that. Insane damage. Insane damage. A touch of consumption. Okay, there's a little bit of blight on us. Not terrible. And there you go. Healed back up again, mostly. And just look at the buffs. They're getting out of hand. It's crazy. As the and we cut falls, you down. A faint hope blossoms. Beautiful. Seize this momentum. Accuracy of visions not guaranteed. Interesting. We'll take that. We'll grab this as well. Very nice indeed. Um... I was going to heal you up with some food, but that's probably not a good idea right now, is it? We don't really have enough food to do that. Here's one of the scariest enemies. And honestly, that was kind of bad. Um, hmm. The, the question is, do we start our preparations in moving everyone back? 
I think we do, actually. I think we do, because this essentially repositions everyone in a position to where they can continue to do what they were doing before. I love it when Harathan crits, because it does extra blight. It's great. Yeah, that, that shuffle wasn't actually that bad at all. Stress wave coming in. Double dodge. That's fantastic. You can take that full blight there. I love this enemy, by the way. The enemy design is so good. I know it's a default one in the game. It's not a modded one, but I still have to say it's very, very cool. Tidal slam, that could hurt. No stun, though. That's fantastic. This guy's very susceptible to blight, so we're trying to get as much in there as we can. As we provide ourselves with the buffs we need. Oh, the triple crit. The triple crit. Quickly do that. Go with one of them. This guy's got a lot of prot, so we're cutting through that with this blight. Stress wave double dodge again. Ah, oh, not, not so lucky this time, but the, the stress isn't really a big deal, to be honest. Nikki is the most susceptible to damage, but that's okay. The pinch. But I don't think we can bleed. Oh, we can bleed. Okay. I didn't think the scare would be able to bleed, but apparently he can. That's okay. Um, one more of those for you. I think you're dead now, aren't you? Yes, you're m more than dead. More than dead. Let's finish you off. And let's get one of them going. There we go. 32 over 4. Falls. My goodness. My goodness. That's insane. We've actually completed a mission already. This has actually lasted a little longer than I thought, but um, we'll head back to town. We've got one more diary entry to go through, and we'll see if we've got any new recruits. But that was an absurdly good, absurdly good adventure. For a time. Harathan's now level 6, and so is Isaac. We're getting a lot of level 6s now, which is great. Very, very good indeed. Can you feel it? The walls between the sane world right. and that unplumbed dimension of delirium are tenuously thin here. Indeed they are. Right, one last diary entry for Griffin, our anointed by strange wonder. I have found myself in a place far away. I shouldn't be surprised, I do not know it. But it seems they are far too used to the strange and bizarre. I found a few fellows, uh, a few fellow uh, followers of the light. Ah, uh, that's it. I found a few fellow followers of the light here that um, earn to uh, cleanse and save. I feel good having so many kindred spirits around. I desire to help them in their creed. More monsters to slay. But now with some souls to save. I didn't remember my name. One of them, a doctor, I think Isaac was it? He said I should be called Griffin. <laughs> Funny. But I can't think of anything else myself, so it will have to do. I love that one. <laughs> but let's have, let's have a little look, see what we've got available for us here. Um, nothing particularly amazing there. Um, let's have a little look, see anything here that we really want. It's, it's, it's a little upsetting that there isn't any of these for modded classes, but at the same time, I, I do understand why. Um, that's really, really good for the um, for the Arbalist here. But we're not going to take anything from there yet. Let's see what we've got on the stage, Coach. See if we've got any anyone new. Um, we have a Corsair. I don't even remember what this class is. This is this, is, this must be a new class. Um, we have a Corsair. We'll take you. No, we, okay. I'm not going to take you on, just because we've taken on a lot of people recently. I will take on the Milkmaid, though. This is a class that I was kind of debating whether to bring on, but she is a healer, and I very much like that, so let's bring on the Milkmaid. Um, and there we go. That's a good episode. I really hope you guys did enjoy. Lots of, lots got done, and yeah, really good diary entries today. Lots of story progression, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one.